Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast, Imagine Wealth Without Risk. Now, the podcast is all about tax lien certificates and tax deeds. Now, I'm sure you remember tax deeds are properties which the taxes have been defaulted upon and the county has confiscated the property and now they want to sell the property and get it back on the tax roll. They want a new owner so someone can help pay the taxes. County always needs money for taxes. Now the properties can be purchased for pennies on the dollar in almost every county in the United States. So we'll talk about that as we go along. Now this podcast includes other experts, including experienced coaches, who also purchase tax lien certificates and tax defaulted property. Now, additionally, at the end of the podcast, you'll be exposed to other business experts. Now, I like to invite other guests from different industries and businesses. I do that, I found out that I like to mix their ideas with my ideas, and then the blend really makes a big difference. I try to blend my experience with other people's experience. And what I find out is sometimes I can create a breakthrough. So I'm hoping by having the other expert, you'll get exposed to other ideas and other ways to make money other than what I'm already showing you. So I bring the experts together, give you ideas, give me ideas. And then what we do is we make ourselves better by doing that. Now, I know everyone wants to make money, but that requires new and different strategies. So where are you going to get those? I'm going to assure you, if you hang in on my podcast, you're going to get plenty of new ideas. Now, a little later on today, you're going to hear from my friend and businesswoman, Kathy Kennebrook. Now, this is a dynamo. This woman has really done some things. Now, she's not only in the tax lien certificate and tax defaulted business, but she's also taken a different road. And it's a little different than what you're going to hear from most of my other experts. So stay tuned. She's going to tell you about a worm farm. So hang in there. Okay, so let's get back to those tax liens and tax deeds. You guys are starting to ask questions, and that's good. So keep the questions coming. I'll try to answer them. Keeping in mind, it might take me a couple of podcasts before I get to your question. But go ahead and send them in, and I'm happy to answer your questions. So today's class is all about a question that I received earlier in the week. Now, the question was this. Is Texas a good state? to buy a tax lien certificate? My answer is always yes when it comes to these things, but let me explain that. So first of all, stay tuned because this is gonna take a few minutes to tell you how it works in Texas. Now I can answer the question. The question is, is Texas a good state to buy tax? First of all, I wanna say, I don't know where you are in the country, but I can assure you traveling somewhere else to buy is an expensive process. But that, if you have, a uh, tax certificate that you can buy in Florida, why go to Texas or Georgia or anywhere else? Try to buy close to home and save yourself that long weighted airports and going through security and all that. Because yes, you might get a higher rate of return in another state, but you're going to use it up with all that travel unless you're going to buy thousands of certificates. But let's start out small and just grow the business. So getting back to Texas, Texas is ruthless when it comes to the collection of property tax. They are serious. Now, here's how it works. A little disclaimer before I tell you that. Keep in mind, I'm a practitioner. I'm an investor like you are. I'm an author and a publisher. I'm not an attorney, and I'm not a county employee or anything like that. So I'm just an investor that wants to do just what you want to do. You want the least risk possible, and you want predictable, certain, and secure investments. So that's what tax lien certificates are about, and that's what tax to fall the property about. Nice, safe, secure investments. That's what I like. Okay, so here's how it works in Texas. The county auctions take place every month on the first Tuesday of the month. Now, Texas has 250 counties. That means there's hundreds of auctions on the same day. Now, Texas auctions the deed to the property. So let me say that again. They auction the deed to the property to the highest bidder at the auction. Now, the highest bidder will will receive a deed to that property. However, the deed generates a 25% return. That's a penalty return. I'll say that again. That's a penalty return. I didn't say an interest rate, so keep that in the back of your mind. The tax deed is redeemable. All right, now what does that mean? That means that you bought a deed to the property. 
However, the property owner can come forward any day from day one, the day they purchase it, all the way through to day 180 and pay the back taxes plus a 25% penalty and redeem the property. In other words, if I say it in layman's terms, the property owner can get the property back by paying you whatever you invested plus 25%. Now, what does that sound like? That sounds like a tax lien certificate, doesn't it? So Texas is selling the deeds, but they act much like a lien. All right, so now there's going to be a lot of special rules that I'm going to go, not going to go into right now, but let's make sure we nail it down and we understand it. So the tax deed is redeemable. Now, let me say that again. If you purchase a tax deed at, at a Texas auction, you will be issued a piece of paper. We're going to refer to that as a deed. However, the property owner has rights to redeem that deed for 180 days. That's six months. And the property owner can do that on day one, day 25, day 50, day 100, all the way up to 180 days. When they redeem, they need to pay you back all of your investment. Let me say that again. They have to pay you back all your investment plus a penalty of 25%. Now, wow, 25% in your money is pretty good bucks no matter where you come from. So this is a pretty simple it's an effective system that really works with, in Texas and there's other states too, but let's just hang in with Texas for right now. So all of the auctions are authorized to sell a deed to the defaulted properties. So imagine for a moment, 200 auctions are all taking place on that first Tuesday in the month. They're all gonna be local auctions. They're all gonna be done in an auction room and there'll be many precincts within the room, but that precincts in the city auctioning off properties from their precinct. So you're not going to walk in a room and there's going to be one auctioneer. For example, in Harris County, I've been there many times. Sometimes they'll have 12 auctions from 12 different precincts all taking place at the same time. So you have to know where the property you want to buy, what precinct it's in, and then you go to that particular auction. Okay, my point in telling you all this, I find that there's never a lack of properties coming up for auction, but you need to know a little bit about this auction. Okay, so what we're doing is we're living in a land of abundance, okay? And it sure is abundant when it comes to tax liens and tax deeds. So Texas is a tax deed state, but the deed is redeemable. Okay, now there's a whole bunch of special auction rules that you must understand. Now you should expect to study these rules before you ever go there and bid. Once again, I want to assure you, it's a business of profits and plenty, abundance profits. Where are you going to make 25% on your money? All of the auctions will be different. All of the auctions will be unique in their own way. So in Texas, the mortgage on the property, which is not called a mortgage, it's called a deed of trust. This is a lien. It's an encumbrance that remains on the property, even though you purchase a tax deed at the auction. All right, so let me hold on. On the East Coast of the United States, all the states use a mortgage with the exception of the Carolinas. So they use a mortgage. Carolina uses a deed of trust. Now, when you get west of the Mississippi, most of the states there are gonna use a deed of trust. Now, they're both a lending certificate and they all provide a lien on the property. All right, so what's difficult to understand is that they have different processes in different states. In the case of Texas, if the property owner fails to redeem, in other words, they don't come and buy the certificate back from you and you take the property, your purchase of the property will not generate a clear title because that encumbrance, the deed of trust will remain on the property. In other words, when you buy in Texas, if the property owner doesn't redeem, you're going to get the lien still on the property. So watch what you're doing. All right, now it's going to take a little time to learn the, the nuances and the difference between these different states. But overall, Texas is very profitable because 98% of the people are going to come and redeem. They're going to want their property back, even if it does have a mortgage on it. So I'll get into more of the nitty gritties on another of, of my podcasts. But right now, here's what you need to know. One. Texas will have plenty of certificates to sell. Number two, they're selling the deed. When they sell the deed, the mortgage, the deed of trust, 
stays on the property. So when you buy, you're going to get a certificate, a deed that's redeemable. And any time in 180 days, the property owner can come in, pay you whatever you paid, plus a 25% penalty, and you have to give them back the deed that you received. So is this a good place to do business? This is a great place to, to do business. Texas is a land of plenty. The auctions are a little different. Yes, there'll be a ton of auction rules, but I think I've given you enough to get you started thinking about it for today. All right, so let's move on to one of our coaches. So tell me where you find all these rules. The county rules, which is the state rules, are on the website for the auction company, okay? And then the other ones you would have to, I would Google them and check them out that way. So tell me, uh, where do I get, I want to buy, a, I'm living in California and I want to buy a property. What do I have to do? I would go to the website for the auction company. All right. This is tax-sale.info. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You know Good, okay. And yeah. they'll start posting the lists sometime in the month of June. Really? And then originally what they do is they get all the locations where they're going to handle the auctions at, and they'll post those. And then after that, as they post the list behind each county name, the county name would be listed in black first, and then it switches to orange to take and signify that the list is posted behind that. And that will include a lot of photos. Okay, nice. But what about rules? That's what I was concerned about. Oh, that would be right on the auction company's website. The, the okay. same website I gave you, tax-sale.info. So they would have the rules for that auction, and would they have the rules for the state, that how they were applying them and stuff like that? It, basically, it's, it's the same way. Occasionally, there'll be a special rule in some county, uh -huh. but usually they will wait until the day of the auction to announce that. I see. Okay. okay. If they've bundled a few properties together or something like that, that would not be in the printed rules, but that would be in the announcement of rules before the auction takes place. Okay. So let me put you in the hot seat here for a second and ask you a few questions. Let's say I'm in California. We'll try a couple of these. I'm in California and I want to go to an auction oh, somewhere in the middle in, say, San Joaquin County, a place like Stockton, or I want to go to, to Fresno or one of these counties in the middle of the state. And I want to go there. What can I find out before I ever even dream about going anywhere? I, I could just stay home and find out. What can I find out? Okay. Most of the auctions in the state of California are handled by a company called bidforassets.com. Uh -huh. And you would go there just like you would to our auction company in the state of Michigan, pull up the rules for the county, and then pull up the available property listings. Okay, good. All right. So I would go to, to bid for assets, but couldn't I also find all that information right at the county? In Okay, in Michigan, most of the time, the county sends you immediately to the auction company. Okay. In California, I don't know if they would immediately send you to the auction company or if they would also provide the rules in the, okay. the, the list of properties. Oh, okay. Just so we've covered it. The rules always have to be at the county because that's where the public knows to go. They don't necessarily know bid for assets unless they got on our podcast and found out because the rest of the world doesn't know about bid for assets. They just know that you know, the county has properties and that would be where they'd look. Okay, let's move on. I think you said earlier that you have bought a lot of properties. So give me some examples of one or two of those and then I'll get into nitty gritties because we're really co covering some pretty heavy duty stuff here. So let's talk a little bit about the, oh, you bought one and you, you held it for a certain period of time and maybe you did something, maybe you didn't do anything, but you sold it. What people really want to know is, can they make a profit doing this? Oh, absolutely. Okay. There's not a problem with that whatsoever. So I have bought, a couple times I bought a house for $10,000 and resold it for 30000 Did nothing to it and sold it a little, you have to wait 45 days for the deed to come. But wow. then within another month or two, I sold it. So you buy it and resell it 90 days? Would that be fair or, or 120? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's oh, very yeah. fair. Okay. 
All right. And so can the average guy do this two times or five times a year? Or what would you suggest? How much money do you want to make? That's what I suggest. Oh, so if I got a lot of money, I can do it. Uh, I was just concerned, would there be enough properties for me to buy? The auctions that I usually attend have between 100 and 500 properties. Wow. Okay. 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 Uh, And how many people attend? That varies from location to location. One of them last year that I went to probably only had about 50 people. 50. Uh, But I've had, I've been to ones where you get two, 300 people, usually not more than about 300 people. So I have to compete with 300 people? First of all, 50% of the people will never bid. 50%. 50%. Okay. Yeah. And of the remaining people, most people are there to buy one property. What if it's the one I want? It's the, it could be, but it's the one that's on their street or it's the one that's next door to them. Oh, uh, I see. Something like that. So it's mostly local folks. There's not too many people. There's a few that I recognize that do go from county to county, but not a lot. I would say that would be no more than 15 people at the auction that may travel from county to county. I see. So, so you're saying I don't have 300 competitors if there's 300 people there? Oh, definitely not. And in fact, I would tell you that when the auction's done, yeah. there's a real good chance that there could be up to 25% of the properties that they received no bids on. Oh, really? They can't sell them all? Correct. Are they, must, are they junkers or what? Some of them are, some of them aren't. Some, it, it just depends. It depends on who shows up that day and whether the room runs out of money or not. All of that is, is, is different from county to county. Huh. Right, so what do they do with the leftovers? Do they put them in the refrigerator and wait till next week or what? It feels like it here based on our weather, <laughs> but that's not really what happens. No? They take and hold those, and they'll have a second auction, which is internet only. I think last two years, it has been in early November. I see. They do all the counties on the same day, and your bids have to be in three days before the auction starts. Oh, really? So you look them up on the internet and then you make a bid and hope you're going to get it and somebody bids higher, they get it. And if there's a tie, the person who placed the first bid gets it. Really? Yeah. And how do you know what to bid? Whatever you think it will take to to get the property. Oh, okay. Okay. Nothing special. Just if it's a $100,000 property and you think you can get by for 25, you bid 25. Is that what you do? Well, I would bid twenty-five and five hundred dollars, something like that, because so many people end at an even number. Oh. So I would never bid a ten thousand or 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 twenty-five thousand is an even number, even though I've gotten properties at the at the ten thousand dollar mark. But I was live and in the room, and if somebody had been t- bid twenty-five thousand two hundred and fifty, I would have went to ten thousand five hundred. I see. I have a client that went to an auction in Bakersfield, California, mm-hmm. and he got a property. He was really happy with it. He thought it was worth about 150, maybe even 200,000. And he got it for 10,000. He was really happy about it. And they had 3,000 properties to sell, and they couldn't sell them all. So he, so what they did at the auction, they announced they'd have another auction, but only online. So the rest of the world never knew that there'd be the second auction. Right. So there was like a hundred people at the auction. So they all knew there'd be a second. So they all went back and they bought like, they bought properties for five cents on the dollar so, because there was no other bidders. So wow. do, do you ever see anything unusual like that happen in Michigan? We do have the internet auction only for the remaining properties, but they don't even advertise it at the auctions as they go around the state. So there's, so if you know what you're doing, there's not a lot of competition. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Yeah. Whoa. So that could, how much difference could that make? It could make a lot of difference in your finances. So tell me about that. So do, do they lower the price to a certain price level or do you just hope you're going to get it or what happens? It depends on the county. 
but a lot of the counties will lower the price to one hundred dollars. Now you're sure you're telling me the truth now? They're, they're going to sell a real estate property for a hundred dollars? Ted, I have bought mm, fifteen or twenty of them for a hundred dollars each. And what are they worth? Five, ten thousand dollars. Usually, you're not going to get a house for a hundred dollars. But oh. I have bought a house for as little as eleven hundred and fifty dollars. Did you sell it? Yeah, for five thousand. Oh, that was okay. That's not great. I don't like to see deals that are that small, but okay, that's good. That was my very first house I ever bought. Dad. Oh, you are taking baby steps. Okay. Yeah. I got okay. Well, I recommend that. that. Yeah. Buy a little one so you can't get in trouble. And okay, good. All right. All right. So tell me this auction. So I can go to this auction anytime in the state of Michigan. And if they don't sell them all, they're going to have another auction. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And is it always up to the county to decide we're going to have another auction or is this just pretty much automatic or what do you, what's the. It used to be automatic, that? but now the counties can opt out. They're not required to participate in that. And of the 71 counties, the auction company deals with, they have between 12 and 15 of those counties that do opt out of the second auction. Okay. So you can, are you saying there's always abundance? I think there is, even though with the economy approving, improving here in the um, last couple of years, the lists are getting smaller, but that still doesn't mean that everybody buys everything. I got it. Okay. All right. So where do you get a list of these properties? That would be from the website, which is tax-sale.info. And what am I going to get when I get the list? You're going to get, it's online. And yeah. so you could print it out and it will show you on the front page, a picture of most properties and the catalog number. The, I'm trying to think what else, because I can't go to the internet and look it up because there's nothing listed right now because we're off season. But the opening bid price, that kind of stuff is there. And then once you click on that property and you've registered, it will take you to a back page that will show you multiple photos of the same property. And if the property is vacant, they will show you interior pictures also. Wow. They give you a lot of information then, don't they? They do. I think it's probably one of the best states for information nationwide. Okay. So give me a quick uh, one minute review of everything you told me on this call because we have to button it up. I usually try to make these 30 to 35 minutes and believe it or not, we already used up. So give me a quick review of, of the advantages of doing, first of all, having a coach and also having a doing place and business like Michigan? First of all, because Michigan's lists are so complete, it gives you a major advantage to purchase your properties in the state of Michigan. Again, the website for that is tax, T-A-X dash sale, S-A-L-E dot info, I-N-F-O. And the only way that you're going to get information on things like what city not to buy in and that kind of stuff you need a local coach such as myself, and that, that's what makes the whole process work. Anybody can start off and do it on their own, but typically if you do that, you're going to run into a hiccup or a pothole, and you're going to have trouble doing the whole process. And a lot of times that hiccup and problem will come in the selling end of it. So oh. that's where a coach is very important. Okay. All right, everyone. We've been talking with Bill Bettos from Michigan, and he's filling us in on some of his experience. He's a coach, and he, he really knows a lot. Bill, I'd like to invite you back for another call very soon, if you'll make yourself available. You did a terrific job today. This is information people can't get. They think they can get information, but this is the real deal because you're actually doing this. Now, the last question for me is, how many deals have you done over the last few years? 70 deals, Ted. 70 deals, but you're not out doing buying from realtors. You're buying 70 deals at auction, right? 70 deals at auction. I've bought some other properties from realtors, but I'm talking about just the auction, 70 properties. Wow. Thank you. You did a terrific job. I'll call you back soon. 
All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad to have you back. My guest today is Kathy Kennebrook, who I've known for a number of years, and you are into, into something that's going to be very exciting because she has experience now. This is a mom that's brought up a handful of kids, and she's taking care of her husband, and she has a business, and she has a lot to tell us, and she even has experience with tax liens and tax deeds that you're going to like to hear about. But more than anything, let's first find out a little bit about Kathy. And uh, Kathy, if you can tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, and then we'll just roll with the interview from there. All right. Sounds great. Hi, Ted. How are you? Gr- great to be on the call. Thank you. Um, as we've known each other a long time, I'm married. I have two children, grown children. I have six grandkids now. Woo! Yep. <laughs> You know, I, I knew you. When, I knew you when I had black hair. I don't have black hair anymore. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> wow. I've been investing in real estate now for over 20 years, Excellent. and as I'm a real estate in, uh, trainer as well, right. we've been doing a lot of things down here. I live down here in Florida. I'm on the west coast of Florida, and we've been doing a lot of things. Real estate investing is going really great. We love that. Right. I love tax liens. I love tax deeds. So we do right. a little bit, a little bit of everything in our business, so that we're right. a little bit diversified. Great. So tell me a little bit about the business, but first tell me about you. So you, you brought these kids up. Did they go on to have great careers or how, how are they doing? Yeah, they're, 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 they've got great careers. Neither one of them went into real estate investing, unfortunately. Uh, my son went into the military, so that's awesome. Oh, nice. um, and my daughter's a nurse. Oh. Oh, so yeah. they're serving the country in a lot of ways. That's nice. That's Yeah, right. exactly. They got sick of you two guys talking about real estate. You knew they weren't going to go into that. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about, real yeah. estate investing is an addiction, and it's awesome. Yeah. So. yeah. So now, uh, what kind of real estate did you do, by the way? We, again, diversified. So, right. so basically, we do a lot of direct mail marketing, and we draw in sellers. And so basically, what I'm doing is we do buy, fix, up, and flip. I do buy and mm-hmm. hold. Good. And on the buy and hold, so we do rentals, lease options, and work for equity. Wow. Um, so again, we, we do a variety of different things to bring great. in income great. from different streams. Great, great. Uh, my investors are, are a gambit of people from 45 to 105. What does it take, not to be just in the real estate, what does it take to be in business? And what should a person be looking for if they're interested in a career in, in a business, any business for that matter? Education, focus. Good. Good. Don't procrastinate. Jump right in and, and get started. That was the biggest thing for me. I spent a year procrastinating and coming up with every excuse not to get started. So the biggest yeah. thing is have the confidence that you'll be able to make it. And if something happens, there are lots of people out there that mm-hmm. are willing to help. Okay. We had a lot of help along the way. So I see. Yeah. Now, as a woman, is it different than doing it as a man? Absolutely. I think women have an advantage, a serious advantage, particularly with the sellers and particularly with the deals. There's no testosterone involved and there's no competitiveness. (laughs) Seriously. So women do great deals with other women and women do great deals with men. And so I really think that women have a real advantage in the marketplace working with the sellers and creating deals um, than the men do. Oh, I'm so glad I've got you on this interview. I have 60%, 63% of my clients are female. And so tell me about some of these advantages and what you found that you've been able to do that maybe a husband couldn't do. That's interesting. Yeah. The women have an easier time working with the sellers and creating the deals. They, they feel like the men feel a lot more comfortable working with the women and women feel a lot more comfortable working with women. And I found this to be true because I've been able to buy deals that other investors couldn't because it was, because there was no oh, competition and, and no, oh. um, I come off just easy and soft in the way I am. Yeah, yeah. And it's so great to create nice. the deals with now, these sellers. Now, did you have any background in real estate before you started this? Absolutely not. <laughs> None. What, what was your What was your career before? My, oh, you're a homemaker. Degree, my, no, my degree uh-huh. and no. All, from the time my kids were small, my degree and my background is in finance. Oh, for goodness years, sake! I spent twenty years in the banking industry. Oh my kids. goodness! How exciting yeah. is that? Oh my it goodness! Is. Oh, yeah. Got sick of corporate America. Decided I had enough and decided really? I wanted to do something for myself. Yeah. Oh, I never heard you talk about that. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so you were in corporate America. So I seriously, I woke up one morning and decided I had enough. I walked in and quit, and then oh. I I did about two or three other entrepreneurial things on my own, and then I got into real estate investing and loved it. 
Oh, well, then I'm, uh, like I said a minute ago, I'm happy to have you here because tell me about the transition. So banking is very conservative. It's a uh, routine. Yeah. You can probably name some other things that we shouldn't say on the tape. But right. uh, anyway, uh, you, you, so how did you make that transition? I literally woke up one day and, and walked in and quit and said, I'm done. I, with, no, with no particular direction at that particular moment, but that's how I am. And it's really a good thing for a woman to do is jump in with both feet, get it done, and then figure it out later. So oh my, my husband God. and I, the way, our motto in our business has always been, Kathy jumps in, makes the mess, and Jay cleans it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but no, wait a minute. But, but Jake's really supportive of what you're saying. Oh, absolutely. So basically, uh, I go in, I make the deal, I put the deal together, and then he figures out how to get the rehab done, how to get the property turned around and get it sold. What a blessing he is, huh? Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah. So it's like a total teamwork thing for us. You're, you're lucky to have each other, it sounds like to me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Super team. Yeah, great, great. Gee, this is good. All right, now this transition. So tell me about the good and the bad. And it's okay, we got plenty of time. You must have had some struggles in there. Not oh, with yeah. Jake, but with doing deals. Oh, absolutely. Well, and not so much the doing deals, but the transition from getting from corporate America to real estate investing. <laughs> Once I got to real estate investing, our first deal was the disaster, the rehabber from Hades. Everything went wrong. We ran out of money. We miscalculated the rehab. Everything that could go wrong did. And we could have oh. quit right there and walked away. And we didn't. It was a lesson. It was a huge lesson for us that I wouldn't trade now for anything in the world. Oh. And so after that deal, we just basically changed the way that we were doing our business, changed the way that we were contacting sellers, changed the kinds of deals that we were doing. The first oh. deal that we did was in a war zone, and I, we made every mistake there was, Ted. I'm kidding you. I, I kid you I, not. I, I, listen, I'm the, <laughs> sa I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I got a really hard head. I'm doing this deal. This is going to make me all these oh, money. Gosh. And then, uh-oh, yeah, I, I went backwards for it. I've had a few I went backwards on. There's no doubt about it. Anybody that tells you otherwise, they're BSing us. You know that. Absolutely. Uh, yep. All right. all right. So now you made this uh, transition and then you went into, uh, so you do a lot of things. Let me ask you a little bit about uh, you. You and I know each other because you do some unusual things in the business that I have. Now, my business, as everybody knows, and the first part of this broadcast was all about tax lien certificates and tax deeds. Yeah. Now, let right. me just lay a little groundwork because you're the unusual person that actually does what I tell people to do. And so what I learned I, from you. Well, thank you. I, I tell people really take a look at residential land and open pieces of land yeah. uh, because you're not going to have a lot of headaches with termites and trash and tenants and all that. And there's some real opportunity at auctions because everybody doesn't take the time to understand that. So I don't mean you, you tell me what you found out about that part of the business. I found that I really enjoyed the vacant land stuff. We work in some rural counties in Florida. I see. And there are fewer people that go after those particular properties. So we started going to the auctions. And then, and like you said, researching the properties ahead of time in Florida, they made it really easy for us because they print these big lists in the newspaper. Right. And so you take the list and then you've got, and, and it was a little more difficult because not all of those pieces of vacant land have addresses. So you've got to use a plat book and research them and figure out where they are. Right. And so we started going to the tax deed sales, and they're cheap. We bought half acre pieces of land for tax for the tax lien certificate, which was a hundred bucks. No way. And yeah, so we're buying a ton of them, and, <laughs> and then. Yeah, and then we figured out, we started like really doing the research. And like, for example, this one piece of land that we did, it was four half-acre plots for a total of two acres, and the four, acre, the four halves were attached. Yeah. And it was actually two different families. So two, one family owned, owned an acre, basically, and the other family owned another acre. And we bought the four pieces. And so we watched those over the three years, and we bought the tax, the tax liens all three years, and then we ended up buying the tax deed. So we were into those. One piece was 400 and the other three were $100 a piece. Really? And so we ended up, by, uh, over the period of the, the three years, the total cost was 2100 bucks. And then, and one of the pieces had the concrete slab on it and stuff. We ended up selling that two-acre plot for $25,000. Oh, you're serious? You bought yeah. it for 10, 10 You only put up 2000 and you sold it for 20000 2100 Oh, my and, goodness. And sold I can... it for 25000 yeah. So, wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh. And then, of course, sometimes you get paid on them, and that's okay. Yeah. I'm good with that. 
so we were buying like pieces of vacant land and we were buy- and we were buying some with the houses on them. So I the see. max I would spend on a tax lien would be like anywhere from 18 to 2 grand. We capped what we were doing at around 2 grand. I but see. we were buying them as cheap as 100 bucks, 200 bucks, and we would keep a chart from year to year so we would rebuy the same ones with the ultimate oh. option of get hopefully of maybe yeah. maybe getting the piece of land. So, and then what we ended up doing with the pieces of land that we got cuz some of them were half acre, some of them were acre, we leased them. And I still you leased them. Of, we leased them. So really? no hur- no hurricanes, no insurance, no problems. Really? So like I yeah, so like I've got one piece leased right now. We've got a couple on main highways and we lease those to billboard companies. <laughs> and then Oh, yeah, never and then got, yeah, and, really? and then I've and then I've got another half acre piece that I leased to a gentleman who need to who needed to expand a worm farm. So I've learned more about agricultural worms in the last two years. Oh, now you're putting them. me on now. I'm not believing no. this. You did a no. worm farm? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they they're tanks and tubes, and they need more room to expand because the worms proliferate and they get more worms and they need more room. It's really Seriously. interesting. And yeah. so does, does and, Florida have good land for that? Yes. They don't need the land. All they need is the tanks and tubes. They need somewhere to put the tanks and tubes. Oh, my the, goodness. The, they put the soil in the tanks, yeah. And oh, then, my goodness. Really? And, yeah. And then I've got another piece that's two acres, and we have a company that's a pine straw company, and they come and clean our land twice a year and pay us for it because it's All right, the pine no, straw that they want. That. What does that mean? What does that mean? The pine straw, the the pine needles that the trees drop is called pine straw, and they use that for mulch. They use it for fertilizer and all kinds of different things. How did you ever figure this out? I just learning from people in the rural areas and talking to people and yeah, just and having people contact us because we were advertising in the newspapers that we had these pieces of land for lease. Oh my goodness! How creative yeah. is that? Wow! Yep. And then my we goodness. owner finance some, and people like in the rural areas we have a lot of mobile homes, obviously, and right. so we've owner finance some pieces also for folks, and then okay. they put their mobile homes. Now talk um, about that owner owner financing. Is that like a contract of sale or a contract for deed or something like contract, that? Contract for deed, yeah. Contract for deed. Now how does that work? Yep. So basically, we hold the note on the land for them for eight years. So basically, the banker came back. Yeah, that's exactly. you. You came back yeah, as a I'm banker. Just, <laughs> yep. And then yeah. the other thing that we've done with vacant land, and all of, a lot of these came from these tax deeds. The other thing we've done with vacant lands is we pair up with the mobile home dealers. And so we have good land and they have good homes. They package them together, sell them, and then when the buyer gets financed, we get paid for our land. See, I knew you as a marketing genius. That's how I met you because uh, well, you, still marketing. You, it's just a there's no way. doubt about it. You have really figured out how to yeah. market these properties and get income and not have to work. And it's all your fault. <laughs> it's all my fault. Yeah. Oh, I, I knew you because of the direct mail kind of stuff. We haven't even talked about that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. All right. All right. So you find these properties that the county is selling a tax lien and then Correct. you take you buy the tax lien, except you buy it each year for multiple years. Correct, for three years. And then they don't pay. So they walk away, and you right. basically bought a property by paying two or three years back taxes. Correct. A lot of these, what we're finding, Ted, is a lot of the pieces that we end up buying are pieces that folks have inherited, and they don't want them. Oh, my goodness. And so they just don't bother paying the tax bills or anything. Like, they're out of state. They're in, like, California or somewhere else, and uh, they inherit these pieces of vacant land, and they don't want it. So part of your research, then, is when you look and say, oh, that guy's from Michigan, he's probably not yes. going to renew it. Is that what you do? Correct. That's part of the research, I'll, yes, sir. I'll be darn. I'll be darn. Wow. Wow. So you're taking your banking career, and now you're financing these deals. Oh, my yes. God. This is incredible. And so what would you rent a piece of, of land for, a two-acre? So mobile home going on one acre or two-acre? How, how much do you need for a mobile home? Half acre. Oh, a half acre. Okay. Half and what, acre. Yeah, where, where we are in North Florida, half acre is plenty for a piece on private property. If it's in a subdivision, it's two acres. Oh, how exciting. Now, I don't want to go any further. Well, give everybody your name slowly and then give them how they can contact you. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of your things. But I'm so excited about finding all this other stuff. I don't want to forget that it's important that we give your information. Okay. My name is Kathy Kennebrook, K-A-T-H-Y. K-E-N-N-E-B-R-O-O-K. My website is www.marketingmagiclady.com. Marketingmagiclady.com.
Okay, now at the end of the end of this, we'll come back to marketingladies.com because I want to uh, ma- marketingladymagic.com. We'll come Mar- back to that marketingmagiclady.com. Okay, I knew I'd screw it up, and I did. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed. Well, it's your call. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's my podcast. I can do anything, right? It's, it's That's a, right. Yeah. Okay, so take me back to okay. So you've done the full gamut. Most people I talk to, they they find that they buy houses or maybe they try to get commercial, but everybody avoids land. Why do you suppose everybody avoids land? Honestly, Ted, I don't know. I think because it's it's not mystical exactly, but it's just something people aren't familiar with or they get it and then they don't know what to do with it. I love it here in Florida because every time a hurricane or a tropical storm comes through, I'm sweating all the rentals I own. But with the vacant land, oh darn, we lost a tree, shoot. Yeah. No insurance, no hassles. And so that the vacant land is actually half of our business at this point. Oh, you've really grown this thing. This is really, uh, oh, yeah. so you, yeah. you can do, can you do some of these every year? Is there always enough available? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The other part of that is the other thing I've done uh-huh. is I have created, since, since you said we were going to do marketing a little bit, yeah. what I do is I take the, notif- the notices that I get for the tax deed sale. Uh-huh. And then I create a direct mail campaign that's specific to the folks who own out-of-state land with past due taxes. And we created a direct mail campaign specifically for that. So the last direct mail campaign I did, we mailed out 147 pieces. We got 18 responses, and we bought eight of them. Oh, my God. And so God. That's, the oh. other, that's the other way that oh I'm buying this God. vacant land oh is through – Yeah. That could be done in 3,000 counties across America, couldn't it? Oh, absolutely. Anywhere you live. Do you teach people how to do it? I'm in the middle of creating a new course just for that, yes. I'm I'm in the middle of the course right now. All right, now hold on. (laughs) Because because people keep asking. (laughs) This is the only one in the world like this, so I want you to repeat all that. So you tell me that you can buy vacant land in your county every year without any trouble. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Now, can the average person that's listening to this podcast do the same thing in their county? Yes. Okay. Tell them how to do it now, but first tell them who you are so they know how to contact you. Okay. Kathy Kennerbrook, www.marketingmagiclady.com. And then my blog is also attractmotivatedsellers.com. And I put all kinds of articles up there all the time, too. So that's another really good place to look for. Oh, I love this. I love this. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. You're like a gold mine. This is wonderful. Okay. All right. So now uh, for my clients, tell them how they could do this. Just tell them what you do. Okay. The more rural the area, the better. But you can do it virtually anywhere. So basically what we do is we take the list of the delinquent tax liens. And they can go down to their county and get that. In the more rural areas, they put them in the newspapers. And so you can just get the list right out of the paper. And on that list will be the person and their name and their address and the property, at least where, I, where we live here in Florida. That's the way they do it. In other areas, it, if they have the name of the person and the property and the tax ID number, you can go online and find it there. So what I did was I created a specific letter to out-of-state owners who own vacant land with past due tax bills. Okay. Now, what does out-of-state owners mean? Because everybody that's listening, I'm going to have some newbies on here. They won't get that. Yeah. Okay. So property is here in Florida. Like, for example, property is here in Florida where I live, but the mailing address for the person is somewhere else. Michigan, California, Texas, whatever. I got it. Okay. Good. Okay. Good, Good point. Yeah. And then we mail this letter to these folks, and the response rate is huge. And what do you say to them? We basically tell them that we're, we, we're buying other pieces of vacant land in the area where they live, and if they're interested in, in the area where they own their piece of vacant land, and if they're interested in selling that piece of land, please contact us. Here's the information I need, and I have a response mechanism in the letter where they give me the information that I need. So when I get the letter, the response back from the seller, the deal's already pre-screened. Boy, anybody tuned into this podcast just got their money's worth. All right, that's fantastic. Okay, I want to ask you a few questions about being in business. Now, you got to be really firm. So tell us about being in business. Now, I don't want you to be a Pollyanna and say it's great and you make a fortune. I want you to just say what it takes to be in, in business, and then you can give us an advantage of being a woman again. Okay. Being in business is tough, especially in the beginning. Anybody who paints it with silk and roses is lying. But now, 
Okay, so the first thing you need to do is get really focused, get organized, and get your team in place. That's the most important thing of all. Uh -huh. Get the people who are going to work with you and get the people who are going to do things for you, like the title company and your real estate attorney and your insurance person and all of your team in place. Once you do that and you start automating pieces of your business, then it becomes really easy, and it's not so hard anymore. But it just you have to take specific steps and move forward, and you need to do something for your business every single day until you get to a point where the business has taken on its own life. And in our case at this point, we have a lot of people in our funnel who do a lot of the work for us. So our business continues to basically run pretty much on autopilot. We're able to travel and do the things that we like to do without having to be present all the time. I see. But it takes work, and it takes specific steps to get there. Now, how long did it take you to go from working in a bank and getting a nice salary to being able to make the same money in business? Probably a year or so, year and a half. A year or so, a year, year and a half. Year, wow, year, you were pretty fast. Half. Wow. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. But real estate investing gave us that opportunity, Ted. It only sure. takes a couple of deals a year and my, your salary's doubled. Yeah, excellent. Okay. This is a wonderful interview. I'm really happy that you were able to come on. So tell me a little bit about the most expensive tax lien you bought. Okay. Okay, so the most expensive tax liens run between 1800 and 2000 We cap ourselves at 2000 nice, We work with a specific nice. budget for each company each year, and uh -huh. we buy certain types of tax certificates in, okay. in each company that we have. Uh -huh. um, and then the cheapest ones have been running about 100 bucks. 100 bucks. wow. Are you yeah. a risk taker or a non-risk taker? Non-risk taker. You don't want to take any risks, okay? No, and I how don't like to take risks. And your husband's Jake, right? Yep, J, okay. J-A-Y. J, okay. Uh, Okay, good. Is Jay a risk taker or is he a conservative too? He's more conservative than me. <laughs> more than you? Um, oh. I know. I'll be but darn. I got to tell you, honestly, Ted, and I appreciate you more than you because you really turned us on to a whole nother income stream for our business. Oh, I really you. like the returns that we've been getting from the tax liens, the yeah. ones that pay off. And, the yeah. more, and so if we invest fifteen, eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars $1,900, obviously the returns are bigger. Okay, but well, you probably don't and, know this, but I actually went broke in a business that had two hundred million two hundred million dollars worth of real estate back in nineteen eighty six. I decided wow. right then and there, I'm out of the risk business. I cannot lose this kind of money in my life any more times. So that's right. how I get in. So that's why I always ask that question about as a person, are you a risk taker? Because people that actually buy houses, they're really taking a risk. There's a lot more risk. As you said, every time there's a hurricane blowing through Florida, you're worried about yeah. what's gonna happen to your roof or whatever. Whereas That's true. you don't care what happens to that piece of land. So how That's interesting true. is that? Oh, wow. That really makes quite a difference. Okay. So tell me a little bit about where you're going with all this. We have about two or three minutes left. And then I just wanted to have that last few minutes. You tell me about you and where you're going and what you're going to do for the future. We're going to continue on where we are. We've actually changed our business model. I just had my 60th birthday. Wow. And so we're, we're changing our business model a little bit, traveling more, working less. So what we're doing is working more of the luxury market now. So we do fewer deals each month, higher dollar. Because luxury properties simply mean bigger paychecks. Nice. Um, the tax liens, I love that. And I got to tell you, since I got a minute, when you're working in rural counties, like in Florida, for example, you would have laughed. You would have loved it. Yeah. When Jay and I would go to the, the tax uh, lien sales, yes. we were buying in different businesses. So we would have different paddles with different numbers. So they didn't understand in the room that we were like together because yeah. he's buying for one company and I'm buying for another one. Yeah. And the men would make all these comments. You need to go home. You should be in the kitchen. You need to be baking. Oh, please. Unbelievable. In this day and age? In this day and age? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was God. craziness. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, my God. Only in Florida. So bunch that of rednecks. was fun because I love to irritate them. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, good for you. They deserved it, don't you think? They did, uh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, tell you to go. Oh, all right. So the two of you go and bid at these auctions against each other, or at Correct. least it appears yeah. that way. Okay, that's nice. Okay, good. All right, so you're, you're changing a lot, and you're going, where do you like to travel? Where do you go? Just throughout the country, and then we have a vacation home in North Florida because we like to kayak. And oh, yeah. because we bought that vacation home, that's what got us into buying the vacant land up there. Oh, okay. And so it, a lot of Northern Florida, people don't know that because they always think of Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Tell people about Northern Florida. It's, it's pretty wide open up there except along the beach, right? It is. The whole Big Bend, mid-Florida section and north of that, there yeah. is so much vacant land up there. There are so many opportunities. It's crazy. 
Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. So any person who lives anywhere in the country where there are large areas of vacant land, you're, you're good as gold. Okay. I want you to give me your contact information once again and describe what you did uh, briefly as, as you can. You st- there's still a time to do that about okay. how you help other people do this okay. business. Okay, so I'm Kathy Kennebrook. I am the Marketing Magic Lady. My website is www.marketingmagiclady.com. I help people implement direct mail marketing in their real estate investing business. I have direct mail campaigns prepared for you. Um, Go ahead and go to the website. Check out my products. I've got some really great products for you to help you to grow your real estate investment business and do even more deals. Okay, I love that. One minute about telling about from buying in other states. So I live in I live in Missouri, and I I want to buy some tax lien certificates, and or I want to buy vacant land. How do I go about doing that? At this point, a lot of the auctions are online, so it's a lot easier than it ever was. Okay, good. All right, so, that's so excellent. You, you can simply go online and and do the auctions in those areas. Okay. All right. Great. Listen, you just did it. I'm so glad that we got together today. And as always, you do a great job. So I want to thank you for being part of what we did today. And when we, when it goes live, I'll let you know that it goes live and then you can hear how well you did, but you're absolutely terrific today as you've always been. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon. I hope so. Thank you so much for having me on the call and I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Thank okay. you a lot.